Comparing a graph and a description, lesson 6.3c. We can compare functions that are presented as a graph and a description in words. First thing we do is write an equation in slope-intercept form for the data in the graph. Number two, we write an equation in slope-intercept form from the words in the description by identifying the input x, the output y, and the rate of change. Three, we draw a graph of the description on the same grid, and then compare the y-intercept b and the slope. By converting both forms of data to the same form, we can easily compare them. It's like when we compare a fraction to a decimal. We first convert them both to fractions, or we convert them both to decimals. Much easier to compare them that way. Sam wants to buy a pressure washer that costs $250. He doesn't have enough money to buy it today, so he compares layaway plans at different stores. The layaway plan at store A is shown in the graph. Store B requires a down payment of $100 and weekly payments of $30 until the balance is paid in full. Now, if we look at this graph, it skip counting by 40s. We can see it starts at $200, but it costs $250. That means there must have been a down payment before he started making the regular payments. So we know this is the graph for store A. We know the power washer costs $250. We write an equation in slope-intercept form from the data in the graph. We're going to let x equal the number of weeks and y equal the balance owed. We use the slope formula to find the slope. We choose two points. We could choose this point and this point. We do the slope formula, and we find that the slope is negative 20. The line crosses the y-axis at 200, but it costs $250 for the power washer. That means there must have been a $50 down payment before he started making the regular payments. So it's at 200 for the y-intercept. Our equation, because we have our slope and y-intercept now, would be y is equal to negative 20x plus 200. Now that we have our equation for store A, we write an equation in slope-intercept form from the description for store B, $100 down payment and weekly payments of $30. We're going to let x equal the number of weeks and y equal the balance owed, just like we did before for store A. We know the power washer costs $250. It's telling us there's a $100 down payment. We know the y-intercept B is going to be $150. Our equation, because of the $30 payments, is y is equal to negative 30x, that's the number of weeks x, plus the $150 balance. Now we draw a graph of the plan for store B on the same grid as store A to compare their y-intercepts and slopes. So here we have our equations for store A and store B. Store A is y is equal to negative 20x plus 200. Store B is y is equal to negative 30x plus 150. Since the power washer costs $250 and a $100 down payment is required at store B, we have 250 minus that $100 down payment is equal to the 150. Our first point for store B is 0, 150. It's going to be right here, right below the 160. Then we've got 1, 120. Right here, we've got 290 here, and we can see the number of weeks is fewer than store A. We're making greater payments, 30 instead of 20, and we had a greater down payment because the balance due is less. We can use our graph to see which store requires the lesser down payment by the y-intercept value. The higher point for store A represents a smaller down payment and a greater balance owed. Store A has a smaller down payment and weekly payment. Our points are closer together, so it's a smaller weekly payment, but we have to pay for more weeks. Store B, we make greater payments, a greater down payment, and it's paid off quicker. So we can use our graph to see which layaway plan will take Sam longer to complete. It would be store A. The greater x value, where y is equal to 0, is the layaway plan that will take longer as the most weeks. So we have a greater x value here, 10, 
where y is 0, store A is going to take 10 weeks, store B is only going to take 5 weeks. By drawing both equations as lines on the same grid, we can easily compare them. We're finished with 6.3c. We're moving on to d, which is the going further at the end of the lesson, and it's determining rate of change and initial value b. Please join me for the last part of the lesson, and have a great day. Bye.